Okay. So in this lecture, we're going to be looking at uh, sampling methods and sampling methods or sampling frames are the ways in which a researcher will determine how they are going to pick or select the people that are going to be part of their study. So before we go into the actual sampling frames, we need to be aware of some key terminology that is important as we go through. So the first term we need to think about is population. Now population refers to the members of a society, and this is every member, regardless of their social groupings or personal groupings, every person in a society is considered part of the population. Researchers can't study everybody in the, in the population because that's just too unwieldy, it's a logistical nightmare, and they may, not everyone in the, re, in the population will fit the research that they are conducting. So this is where we get the research population. And the research population are the specific group that is going to be studied by the researcher. Now this could be linked to cadges, it could be um, subcultures, it could be ident uh, personal identifications. Um, it really is up to the researcher to determine, to narrow down the, the population to the people that they really want to be part of their, that they want to investigate and to research. But still, this is gonna to be too big a group for the researcher to be able to include everybody. And not everybody will want to be involved in the research. So this is where we get the sample. So these are the people who actually take part in the study. And what we're going to look at in today's lecture is six ways in which a researcher can choose who they are going to have as part of their study. So we're gonna be looking at random sampling, opportunity sampling, systematic, stratified, quota, and snowball. Now there are more sampling frames than this, and some of these may have slightly different names um, as well, but these are the six that we're going to be looking at today. Um, some do require some mathematics, but it's simple percentages, it's nothing overly complicated. So let's look at our first sampling frame. So our first sampling frame is the random sample, and this is really quite straightforward it's essentially picking names out of a hat. Now a researcher won't literally put everybody's name into a hat and pull out their names. It's usually done by a computer program. Um, and the computer program will identify however many people it is that the researcher wants as part of their study. And if one of those people do not wish to take part, then the computer program will pick out somebody else. So for example, if we have 60 people in our research uh, in our research population and we want to use 20 of them for our study you ask the computer to pick out 20 people as you can see here now this is as i said it's very straightforward it's very simple to use it's very quick and it's easy to include other uh, new people into the sample if somebody drops out or somebody says that they don't want to take part now the problem with it is, is that you can end up with an unrepresentative sample, meaning that you end up with more of one particular social group in your study than you do others, or you completely miss out a, a social group from your sample because the computer program doesn't differentiate, it literally just picks people out of the hat. The second one is very similar to the random sampling, and this is opportunity sampling. So with an opportunity sample, it's about taking people who are available at the time of your study to carry out the research and fit your criteria. Now, generally what will happen is the researcher will put out an advert, it might be via Twitter, social media, might be a flyer at a university campus, depending on who they're looking for. And then people self-select and say, yes, I would like to take part. Yes, I would want to be, uh, I fit this criteria. Now, again, this can be relatively straightforward. It can be relatively easy for the researcher to, to do. 
However, the problem with this could be that the sort of people who take part in these studies may have certain characteristics which can skew the validity of your data. So, for example, if you are doing a study on women aged 20 to 30 and you're conducting your study at in the middle of the day, then you may find that the women who are able to take part are unemployed or stay at home mothers or students. So therefore, you may not get that working women's perspective within your study. The other issue you can face is the fact that you may not be able to get the number of people that you want in your study because um, and it may or it may take a long time to get the number of people that you want. So it might be that your opportunity sample won't reach the sample size that you require. Next up is systematic sampling. Now, this does require a little bit of maths, but nothing major. So with systematic sampling, what you're doing is you will list all of your potential participants um, and then take every nth person until you reach your desired sample size. Now, to determine your sample, your your nth number, it is the um, number sample size divided by your research population size to determine what your nth number is. So if I have a research population of 60 and I want a sample of 20, 20 divided by 60 tells me that I need to take every third person from the list. So again, this can be quite straightforward depending on the numbers that you're using. But again, a computer program will probably help with this um, process. And if somebody decides that they do not want to take part in your study, then you would just go back to your list and start with the every nth person again. The problem comes in the fact that you again, you may not get a, a representative sample and there may be some bias in terms of how the list is curated, how in what order people put the list together in. Um, so it might be that you end up with more of one particular social group or um, criteria in your study than um, is in the research population. But it is more likely to be representative than, at, say, a random sample and definitely more than perhaps an opportunity sample. Stratified sampling is where the real mass comes in, and this is where we're going to start using percentages. Now, with a stratified sample, what you do is you first of all, you are grouping your sample into um, smaller groups such as class, age, gender, ethnicity or whatever um, strata you are choosing to use. For our example, I'm going to group our people by colour. OK, so we have all of our oranges together, all of our greens, yellows, reds and purples. Now, with a stratified sample, what we then need to do is work out what percentage of the population each group makes up. So, for example, I've got 11 orange people in a population of 60. 11 divided by 60 is 0.18. Therefore, orange people make up 18 percent of the research population. From here, what I then need to do is make sure that my sample also reflects that. So my sample needs to have 18 percent orange. OK, so to do this, it will be 20 times 0.18, which gives me 3.6. Now, obviously, we can't have 3.6 of a person, so we would round that up to four. Okay, so this particular sampling method is a little bit more complex. Again, a computer program would more than likely um, curate this for you. But it is the most representative sample because you are making sure that your sample is a microcosm of the research population. Issues come in the fact that it is complicated and it, it can be um, difficult to get your sample because your sample, because you've got to round up and round down, you may not get the sample that you require. Um, it may be that you have too many people or you won't have enough people. 
Um, and then you also have the problem of what if somebody doesn't want to take part. Now, because within the research population strata, people are randomly selected, you can go and select it and or ask another person to take part. But it does get very complicated and it can be very time consuming in order to get the sample that you need. Now, if we do another example here with um, greens, we have 13 green people. So 13, make sure I can do this correctly, 13 divided by 60 is 21.6. So 22% because we round up, 22% of the research population are green. So then it would be 20 times 0.26, which gives us 5.2. So we would round that down um, and we would have five green um, people as part of our sample. And those people would be randomly selected from that strata group. So it is very representative, but it is time consuming and it can be difficult to get your um, required sample size. Quota sampling is similar to the stratified sampling in that you are going to group your research population into specific groups, just as we did before. However, this time, instead of it being a percentage that you're taking from each group, you're gonna take the same number. So in this case, we've got five groups, 20 divided by five is four, so we're gonna take four people from each group. And again, this is quite representative because you are having every group um, present it, I'm trying to think of a different word there. Um, however, it may mean that um, some groups are underrepresented, whereas other groups are overrepresented. Now, that can be a good thing in the, that it can give the smaller underdog groups more of a voice, but it still may skew the validity of your data because you will hear everyone's voice equally rather than in the proportion that they are in the research population. Our final one is snowball sampling. And snowball sampling is often used with groups that are hard to reach, closed groups such as gangs or sects and cults, or groups where there may be few participants who reach your criteria. So what happens with a snowball sample is that the you would find a gatekeeper. So this would be one member of the research population who are willing to take part. So in this case, we've got our little green man here. He would then or she would then introduce you to other members of the group who or research population who would also like to take part and they could introduce you to more participants and so on and so forth. So this is a good way of accessing those closed groups or smaller research populations. However, again, you may have an issue of representativeness. So as you can see from my example on the screen, I've, I'm covering my greens, my yellows and my purples, but I don't have any reds. So I'm not having, I, I do not have a representative sample of the research population. Additionally, because each in, uh, participant is introducing new participants, they may share characteristics outside of what the research population is that will skew the validity of your data. So although it is and sometimes the only way to access certain groups, it won't give you a representative sample and may skew the validity of your data. So those are our um, research uh, sorry, sampling frames. For each one, you need to be able to define it, describe it, and evaluate it. And you need to be able to uh, um, define the key terms of sample, sample frame, research population, total population, CADGES, and social stratification.